My name is Vahid Chitsos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning. I apologize for my tardiness. My phone charger was not charging, and I realized it's too late, so I'm late. My fault. Sorry. Don't even worry. <laughs> Go ahead and introduce yourself for everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. So I'm from California. Um, my name is Summer Tranko. I'm an online fitness coach and bikini competitor as well as a business owner. So. Awesome. Where, which part of LA are you from? I'm by Santa Barbara. So oh. it's north of LA. Yeah. The kind of Central Coast. That, uh, yeah, I'm right, right next to the 101 freeway. It's a pretty cool freeway. So it's yeah. pretty cool. So how can I have a productive day? How can you have a productive day? I think it starts the day before, honestly, in my opinion, because if you know exactly what you're going to do and you can plan out your day, then you know that you're going to have tasks that you need to get done every single day. Um, so I actually do that. I plan it out in the app called Trello. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Um, so I'll plan out my daily habits and I'll separate them into different categories. So I have like money. So I have direct and indirect how I can be making money. And I'll kind of categorize that. And then I have my morning routine. I have activity. I have um, self-improvement and happiness. So like different categories. And I will kind of write things that I need to get done each day to get to fill those categories. So for me, I know I'm going to have a productive day when I do that the day before and plan everything out that I need to get done. I love it how you left the boyfriend and girlfriend and the husband and wife completely out. <laughs> that, I, I, I just noticed that you completely left them out, but that's okay. I can't do that because I, my wife, I'm going to need, she needs to be in that schedule. So uh, yeah, that's why I I'm think... not using that app because then she's going to get on my case. <laughs> when I'm not there. So that's how you go. So, but at the end of the day, how do you measure? Because just putting it on a list and itemizing it, that's not going to get it done. That's the first system. I think that's a very important, but mm -hmm. how do you measure on that day, if you're productive, do you calculate it weekly? Should I calculate it monthly? How do you do that? Give us a little bit more detail. I'm interested in what you do. Yeah, I calculate it weekly just because I like to feel accomplished um, by the week. So I think, I mean, I set long-term, short-term, and like daily goals. So that's kind of how I measure if I was successful that day. Um, so I will have like three main things that I need to get done each day that is going to make me push me forward towards those goals. So if I can get those three things done, then I'm going to feel productive that day. So that that's kind awesome. of how. Now, is that, is that just because you're in fitness and that works really good for fitness or it could work for all aspects of my life? I feel like it would work for all aspects because I do it for my business. I do it for my clients. Um, like for instance, I would have a coaching call, um, onboarding a new client and, um, updating client plans in one day. And if I can get all of those done that day, then I'm going to feel productive. That is awesome. Throughout your day or weekly, how much of your time is dedicated to self-development? And what are some of the methods that has worked for you? Do you do books? Is it Audible? Is it YouTube? Is it other mentors? Give us some pointers on that because you mentioned self-improvement. How do mm -hmm. you do that? For me, a lot of it is researching, uh, reading books for sure, listening to podcasts, um, networking with people, connecting with people who are in the position that I want to be or who I can learn from. So there's a lot of different ways, but definitely reading books is probably my number one. I'm huge on reading books. Um, What's your so, favorite self-help book? Self-help? Um, I really like Millionaire Success Habits by um, Dean Grazioso. That was probably the first book I read that kind of changed you my life. You just broke my heart. You didn't say Think and Grow Rich. I was going to say Think and Grow Rich, definitely. But I feel like for me, I already kind of developed that mindset. Um, but I think if I had read that, the very first book that before I was, I had the mindset shift, I definitely would have like taken a lot more from it. But because I had already developed that mindset, it was almost like I was rereading what I already kind of was doing and incorporating into my life. But for someone who's looking for that mindset shift to like, how can I be more success successful? How can I shift my mindset to think more positive and like think success every day? Then um, Think and Grow Rich is definitely the book to read. If you had to guess and, and put a percentage on it, you don't have mm -hmm. to be accurate 100% right. But 
Do females care more about their body or male? That's the first question. Second question, <laughs> is that correlated to their confidence level of what they do in life? Is there a correlation between those two? And I'm asking this question because I, I'm clueless. I want to know what it is because I don't deal with people on a daily basis that will share that kind of information with me. Mm -hmm. um, that's tough. I think anyone who's into fitness kind of has some type of self-image picture of themselves of like they're not happy with where they are um even though people don't really want to admit that kind of the main reason we all get into fitness is because we want to improve our bodies because maybe we're not happy with where we are right now um so i think both men and women can struggle with that um i feel like there's a lot more pressure put on women because of um how we're how society presents us but i do think that men struggle just as much um but they're just not open to admitting it as much um yeah who do you feel comfortable working with male or female <laughs> which one which one well let me rephrase the question which one is more coachable to you and they listen to you more females definitely females listen more? <laughs> yeah all right for all the guys listening out there you need to start listening more cool <laughs> Now, Females. You, at, at a young age, you started. How did you fund the business? How did you start? Give us the business aspect of it because it has to do with a lot with the mindset. And, you know, to me, it doesn't matter if you're in fitness, if you're in financial services, you could be a hairstylist. It could be in any industry. It could be a nurse. It could be whatever. But that mindset of wanting to go to work for yourself, I think that's kind of universal. You, you kind of need to have it to start. But what tips can you tell us or some of the struggles or challenges that you might have had so far, and how did you overcome those? Okay, so I was at a university um, not too long ago, actually, and I was going to school for nutrition, and um, I just didn't feel in alignment. I knew, like, I, I had, like, the entrepreneur mindset of, like, wanting to work for myself and not needing to go to school, but I was kind of already stuck because it was one of the most elite schools that I was going to, and, you know, my parents were telling me, like, don't drop out of school. You need a degree to be successful. <laughs> and um, so that was kind I'm of I'm not like going to comment on that. Are your parents <laughs> hanging out with too many Persians? Is that what's going on? Your parents are hanging out with Persians? Because that's what I hear from my mom till today. I mean, every day she reminds me of that, but that's okay. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure we all hear it. But it was kind of like engraved Honestly. in my mind that I needed to go to school. But I knew, like, once I went back to college on my second year, um, I was like, this is not for me. Like I was already like reading so many self-development books. I was reading more books for self-development than I was for my school. So I knew I was like, this is not like, I'm not in alignment. So I dropped out of the university and just started taking off on my own business. Um, I did, it was like kind of an agreement with my parents. Like I had to get a nine to five job just to kind of support and make money and just so they could see the com money coming in. Cause I think the older generation doesn't realize how you can make a business from social media and uh, the internet. So to them, it didn't make sense what I was doing. So I had to kind of have that as a side job that I had to do to make them happy. Um, but I eventually quit that. And so I used a lot of that money to fund like my business to start. Cause I think like it is good to have some money from like a job, but also I did put myself in a little debt when I quit my job because I wanted to build my business and I knew that there was like good debt versus like bad debt. Um, I don't know if you read rich dad, poor dad, but he explains a lot about that. <laughs> so I was putting myself in like a lot of good debt and um, I knew that I was going to be able to work and pay it off. So yeah, eventually I was able to pay it off and get to where I am right now. So yeah, it's so funny. I was talking to my mom. This was like two weeks ago. I was telling her we were developing an app and we spent so much money on it. We did this, 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 this. So she pulls me to the side, you know, as if like she doesn't want anybody to hear. She's like, can you do something good with your life? Don't waste your life like this. You're talented. Is this going to make money? I'm like, mom, apps make billions of dollars. Have you noticed it? She's like, but you don't think you're like, you know, do something real. I'm like, mom, it is real. She's like, but this whole thing, like, that's the older mm -hmm. generation. So exactly. Imagine if I didn't have that mindset, I would have been sold because in so many cultures, you're supposed to respect 
the people that are like your parents, you know, older generation, because they got the wisdom, right? They've gone through mm-hmm. a lot. But imagine if I would listen to stuff like So I'm just thinking when she said that, I'm thinking how many people's livelihood will get changed because they're listening to, to the loved ones that have no clue that the future has already been altered. Mm-hmm. The future that we're going to live in, our parents and older generation will have a hard time coping with because it's like they're turning the whole thing upset. Like it's changing everything. So that's why I think Napoleon Hill says it over a hundred years ago. So the number one cause of failure is because a lot of people listen to their families, members, mom, dad, that have no idea about business. They're listening to people that shouldn't be giving business advice. Maybe my mom could give us advice about how to raise children, do this, or in a profession. Very successful hairstylist. Like that's the area she should give me advice on if I'm going into that field. Everything mm-hmm. else, she needs to, so I was like, you know, don't worry, mom. I'm going to think about a second idea. This, this. So I give her that. I lied. I lied flat out yeah. to my mom. I said, don't worry. I have a backup plan. There is no backup plan. I'm all in in this. That's it. So I told her, don't worry. We got backup plan. You know, she's like, okay, now I feel more comfortable. Keep up the good work. I was like, cool, cool. That's it. So I just don't want to have my mom be stressing every day about me. So I was like, it's cool. No, But imagine how much, how many of our, the younger generation under age of 30, are going through that struggle that they cannot say that to their parents or loved mm-hmm. ones. I don't know if you experienced the same thing or not. Definitely. Like my whole life, my parents were telling me to go to college and I listened to it. Like I didn't know that there was another option because that's what they did. But if I didn't have that shift in my mindset, like I would have just gone to college and not been happy, not followed my dreams and just been stuck in only working for a paycheck. And I think like so many people experience that and because it comes from our loved ones, it's so easy to fall for it and believe it. So it's really like, like you said, it's all in that mindset. Like if you don't have that mindset, you're just so gullible and you're going to listen to like what your loved ones are saying. So my other question, my last question would be this. If you had a recommendation to yourself that you could see or, or, or a young entrepreneur just like yourself, that's out there that's watching this. Somehow, somewhere they're going to watch this. If they watch it, hum, what, what percentage of the time is all rainbow, sunshine, everything is good, money is coming in? And how many percent is going through challenges, struggles, getting punches in the face, all of these different stresses that you need to have in, in building a business? Because I think a lot of people look at the end result, but they don't know all the processes well, more like this, all the stuff that you got to go through. They look at the end result or it's just like me. I look at someone who's got a six pack. I don't have a six pack. So I got a one pack. There's no six, but there's none of that stuff. I have. It's just one, right? <laughs> but then when I look at somebody, I'm, I'm struggling with that. I'm looking at the end result and I'm like, okay, that's cool. I should do that. But the other part that I need to be reminding myself is that it took that guy maybe six months, maybe one year, maybe five years, maybe 10 years. I don't know. I didn't go through that process. So for me to want the end result doesn't make sense. What would your recommendation would be to that young person watching this? I think taking risks and being uncomfortable is going to get you closer to success than just staying where you are. So whatever risk, whatever you're thinking about that you want to do, I would just go for it because anyone who's in business and wanting to create something or wanting to be somewhere you have to go through so much learning processes and like failures to get there. It's not just a one way street. You're going to learn and you're going to alter and you're going to make different turns. You're going to find out what works, find out what doesn't work. And the only way to do that is to try and to take those risks and to do the things that make you uncomfortable. Um, So I would say like 85% of the time is failure and just, finding new ways to do things like making innovations, improvements, like you're never going to be stuck somewhere. There's always going to be something that goes wrong or something that happens that you don't expect. And you're going to need to alter and make those adjustments, take those risks to get your business to the next level. Like 85% of the time is not pretty. <laughs> like it's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of challenges for sure. A lot of challenges. How much of those struggles and challenges are being solved by you 
and how many what's the percentage that you get help on those because i feel like a lot of entrepreneurs are more like innovators they create they go solve i mean they try to solve things but what would you say the percentage could be are you solving all the challenges yourself are you getting help or at what point should i seek out help i think we can there's always ways to learn and because we have the internet there's so much information in front of us that if something's going to cost you a lot of money where you could go to the internet and learn it yourself i would say try to learn it yourself but there is that leveraging and if you're it's going to take you two years to learn how to do that you want to leverage that because the two thousand dollars you're going to pay someone to do that your time is way more valuable than that so i think you kind of have to weigh the benefits for of you learning it versus like hiring someone to do it for you um but i do preach like gaining as much knowledge as you can so learning about finances, learning about customer service, like all of that you should kind of have a little background on and know how to do um, so that you do know what's going on, even if you do hire someone. So, I mean, does that kind of answer the question a little no, bit? I, got I, I just, I just want to make sure that the people watching or whoever is listening to our message is that you got to create. We don't pay you for your time. We pay you for the value you bring to the marketplace. So, it's not just the time. So you got you to gotta learn, just like you said, I love that because I think everybody who's in business should know their business. Maybe not necessarily do everything in your business, but if you're a restaurant owner, like any of the departments are lacking a person, you should be able to go and conduct that. You know, If the mm -hmm. chef doesn't show up one day, the busboy doesn't know what to do, you're going to need to go in there and you know, fill that role up. And I think that's what an entrepreneur is that you're able to wear different hats at different given times, but that doesn't mean you're going to do everything. You're managing, working your business, and it's generating profit, but you got to know that stuff. So I think that's very, very important. You can't delegate everything. Yeah, definitely. For me, like up until this point, most of the things that I've learned, I've kind of done myself. I haven't really asked for help as much. However, I do see how other people are doing it, like other fitness coaches, what their approaches are, how they're improving and innovating. And I learn from that and take what I can. But I think a lot has been just trying new things and doing a lot of research to kind of solve the problems and roadblocks that I've had to overcome. Awesome. Awesome. So, Miss Summer, how can they find you? Uh, where are you at? How can they message you? Uh, how do they reach you? Yeah, so Instagram is the best way. I'm pretty active on there. So at Fitness All Summer, I think you can click it on the live. Um, also, my website is fitnessallsummer.com. Um, but Instagram is probably the best way to reach me. Dandia, yeah. listen, thank you so much for taking this time and being with us. Hopefully, we could do more collaboration. You're only like two hours away. Looking yeah. forward to hearing more with you. Thank you. It was great talking to you as well. You got it. Talk to you Have soon. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye.